During 2020, our three hybrid journals, Development, Journal of Cell Science and Journal of Experimental Biology, became the first ever transformative journals. This means that they will make a more active push towards open access in the coming years. I'm here to explore this strategy in more detail and to talk with James Briscoe, Editor-in-Chief of the Journal Development and Senior Group Leader at the Francis Crick Institute in London. So James, to start, what do you see as the benefits of open access publishing? Well, I think it's fantastic for authors. It means that immediately you publish your work, it's, it's accessible to um, everyone uh, from the moment it's published. And as a reader, it means you have access to that content, whether you're um, accessing it from your institution or from home or when you're traveling. So it just makes uh, the work much more available, much more freely available uh, immediately it's, it's published. Um, and as transformative journals, we're aiming to grow the percentage of open access research content in our journals by at least 5% each year. And we believe that read and publish agreements are going to be one of the key factors in this open access growth. A read and publish <coughs> agreement is basically an agreement between the company of biologists and a library or consortium. And it has two components. Um, in the read component, um, it means that all of the readers in the institution can access the content, including all the way back into the archives. Um, so it's very similar to the subscription. And then the published component of the agreement allows corresponding authors at that institution to publish an unlimited number of open access articles without having to pay an additional open access fee. Um, so the company of biologists has signed um, read and publish agreements in many countries and momentum is growing. So James, how do you see these read and publish agreements benefiting the research community? Well, I think in a number of ways. I think for a start, it means that as an author, when you publish your work through a read and publish agreement, it's much easier to do. You don't have to worry about filling in the forms for the uh, APC, the open access charge, and your work is immediately available as open access. Then as a reader, it also means that we have access to all of the content from company biologists, as you say, dating right back into the archive. So it makes access to that material much easier. Um, and your own institute, the, Fra the Francis Crick Institute, has also got a read and publish agreement. Um, how does that benefit you personally as an author? So as an author, it's going to make it much easier. So as, an, as a corresponding author, anything I publish will be covered by the read and publish uh, agreement, meaning I won't have to pay separate open access charges. And I also won't have to fill in the paperwork every time we, we publish a paper with one of the company of biologist journals. So we can see that librarians are putting in place read and publish agreements that are good for authors, good for journals and good for science. Um, and it's important that we can offer these sorts of agreements to a wide range of libraries and consortia, not just those in the richer countries. So we're also delighted that we have a read and publish agreement with IFL, which supports access and open access publishing from developing and transition economies. Yeah, I think that's fantastic news because it really emphasizes the global nature of research. And I think read and publish uh, agreements are one example of how we can democratise access to research. Brilliant. Thank you very much, James. Thank you.